Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author, I'm a counselor, and a depression survivor. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. The title of today's talk is, Does Exercise Really Heal Anxiety? But before we start, we have to do our, our humor piece, of course. So I have a pun and a joke. Um, what did the lawyer say after he came home from work? It's been another trying day. I thought that was good. Okay, here's another joke about three souls dying and going up to the pearly gates. And when St. Christopher, not St. what is he? St. Peter, that's, I get my saints mixed up, right? Anyway, St. Peter is there to meet them. And he, he asked the first one, what was your annual salary while you were living? First guy says, well, I made $200,000 a year. I was a trial lawyer. Second guy says, and answered that question, well, I made $95,000 a year. I was a realtor. The third guy says, I made $8,000 a year. And St. Peter says, really cool, wow, that's amazing. What instrument did you play? Hey, you think uh, musicians have it bad? He could have said, you know, what book did you write? But anyway, the average, uh, by the way, the average salary of writers back in the 90s when I was writing was $11,000 a year. So there you go. All right, let's get back to the topic of today's video, which is, does exercise really heal anxiety? Well, you know, I did one. It's been really, really popular called, does exercise really heal depression? And the answer was yes, because it grows new brain cells, brings blood and oxygen to the brain. Well, guess what? Anxiety does the same thing. Uh, many, many studies have shown that the best way to get out of a really bad anxiety attack is go out and run, run, run. And let me uh, start with two personal stories that illustrate that. The first time that I got hip to the fact that exercise really could help anxiety was way, way back in high school. When I was with my best friend, Stuart, I think we were juniors, we were studying for a difficult chemistry test together and Stuart suffered from anxiety and at one point he got up, put on his overcoat and started walking out the door. I said, what are you doing? I said, uh, he said, I'm taking one of my neurotic walks. I said, what is a neurotic walk? He said, well, whenever I get anxious and I'm really anxious about this test, I simply go outside and walk as fast as I can for miles until I'm exhausted. That's the only thing that heals the anxiety. 30 years later, I used the same strategy as Stuart when I encountered something called agathesia. It's a uh, intense inner restlessness that comes about as a side effect of medication and symptoms include uh, pacing, walking, the compulsion to move, not being able to sit still. That's actually the Greek roots of the word agathesia. And I did a whole video on this called The Deadly Side Effect of Antidepressants. Well, on this particular occasion, I had taken an SSRI medication. I won't say what it was, but I took it and I had acathesia. The very next morning I got up and the first thing I noticed was my legs were twitching, then my knees were going up and down like this, and my body was shaking. Pretty soon I had to get up. I can't get up now because they'll ruin the microphone, but if I, I, I could show you, I would get up and I would pace back and forth, back and forth, yelling, screaming, sometimes hitting myself in the head. It was a nightmare, and I couldn't stop it, and this went on for weeks. During one of these intense pacing exercises, <clears throat> I got the idea of calling an old friend I hadn't seen in years named Teresa. I met her in Eugene. She was in grad school. Didn't know if she wanted to be a, a nurse or a teacher. Well, she ended up being a nurse, a psychiatric nurse. I called her up and she said, Douglas, the only way to get rid of those agitating chemicals in your brain is to burn them off through intense exercise. You've got to do something that raises your heart rate to 80% of its normal level. I said, what'll well, do that? Ah, I like to swim. So I call up a neighbor. I couldn't drive in this condition. She drove me down to Dishman Community Pool, a couple of miles down the road. I got into the pool and I started uh, furiously swimming laps. Now, I'm a big believer in uh, affirmations, so I created an affirmation that I synchronized to the swimming. It was, I think, I am stable, I am peaceful, I am calm. I am stable, I am peaceful, I am calm. I said that over and over again as I was swimming one lap after the other. By the time I was done with the mile, I was exhausted. I plopped myself into the hot tub next to the pool, and for the first time all morning, I felt some peace. I later told uh, Teresa, you know, I wasn't swimming for my health. I was swimming for my life. Now, let's look at the science that explains how anxiety works and how it's been so effective in the stories I told you. I did a video called How to Rewire Your Anxious Brain. It's been really popular, and I talk about two brain circuits that are involved with anxiety. And one of them involves something called the amygdala. Uh, it's a small almond-shaped structure in the emotional brain. And it's called the sentinel of fear. It's always looking out for a threat. That's its job to protect you. 
Well, in generalized anxiety disorder or panic disorder, the amygdala gets tricked. It thinks there's a threat, but there's nothing there. Nonetheless, it, it activates what's called a fight or flight response. Uh, uh, your, your heart rate goes up, your breathing increases, uh, your muscles tense, you're, you're ready to fight or flee. And uh, when you're in this kind of agitated state, you cannot talk yourself down from this kind of anxiety. So the key is, instead of trying to resist this flight or flight energy, use your muscles in a way that actually deactivates uh, the amygdala's overreaction. And the way you do that is you use your large muscle groups in a rhythmic way in a moderate uh, level of exercise. So examples of this would be running or swimming or cycling or dancing or fast walking. Use your muscle groups you know, to fight, to flee, and after a while uh, the amygdala will calm down. So, they've done a lot of studies where they ask anxious people to exercise, like I've described. And they find that within 20 minutes, uh, the calming effect of exercise kicks in. Now, that's about the same time it takes a, uh, a Xanax or a Clonopin or a Valium to kick in. Now, the difference is when you take those drugs, as I found out many times, you end up being spacey and loopy and foggy and, and you can't concentrate, let alone drive a car. But on the contrary, after a good workout, you feel clear-headed and focused and alert. Finally, exercise doesn't just reduce your anxiety for a few moments or a few hours. <clears throat> Research has shown that following an exercise plan for 10 weeks can actually lower your general level of anxiety. So if you're like me and you suffer from generalized anxiety disorder, uh, following an exercise plan, maybe doing it three or four times a week, will decrease your need to reach for Valium or Xanax or Clonopin or any other anti-anxiety medication and will definitely increase your general level of wellness. So whether you're depressed, whether you're anxious, or a combination of the two, the answer is always the same. Get moving. All right, this has been Douglas Block. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like. Uh, likes are really important. I guess YouTube notices them. And uh, you can always ask questions in the comments section or you can email me, douglasblock at gmail.com. If you want to subscribe to this channel, simply click on my photo during the closing credits. You'll be taken to the subscribe page. And there's a little bell up there. If you click on that bell, you'll get notified every time I do a new video or a new live chat. If you want to visit my website, healingfromdepression.com, click on the image of the book, Healing from Depression. And if you want to look at the videos up there, just click on those videos. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. And remember, keep moving. Thanks a lot.